Hello and welcome to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. Women's basketball took home two victories during the Leah Whitaker Memorial Classic just this past weekend and here to talk to us about this early season so far and to help us break down a, a big victory against Lawrence Tech is the head coach of the Wildcats, Ethan Whaley. Coach, it's about time we started talking basketball here on Wildcat Week, isn't it? Finally, it's great to be back. <laughs> it is amazing though how, how uh, quickly time goes by and we're into basketball season and and as we said um, two really uh, nice wins for you this past weekend at home in the Leah Whitaker Classic and I know before we even talk basketball um, for those who knew Leah and Wildcat basketball and even though it was probably uh, before your time there is always kind of a legacy that 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 surrounds that that weekend and that that uh, tournament and um, it's it's great to remember what Leah meant to us. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a privilege to kind of carry on that tournament and honor Le Leah with uh, with this tournament. And then the cool part is, before a game, my pregame speech is already said. It's guys. Yeah. Here's who Leah was. She yeah. was the best teammate to ever play. She was the most unselfish, the most humble mm -hmm. person. And the only thing she cared about was seeing the people around them around her grow. Yeah. And when you have that mentality, it becomes infectious in a locker room. And when you have 14, 15 players with that same vision and that same goal, all of a mm -hmm. sudden, it becomes a really special atmosphere. Well, when I talk to people about Leah, and I knew her just a little bit, but you talk about the ripple effect of mm -hmm. someone's life. And she wasn't here very long, but she wasn't a little pebble in the pond. I mean, she was a big rock that really, her, her impact and influence, it, it, I see it in the lives of, of people she touched even today. So like you said, it's a great weekend, a great way to honor her. And hopefully we played like uh, she would like us to play. And I think um, you, you had to be pretty, pretty excited with the effort the intensity the Wildcats brought this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, if you want to talk about making people better, we had 40 assists in the mm -hmm. weekend, so we shared the basketball well. We shot it well and, and defended well. We were very connected on the defensive end, and and uh, I do believe that it was a it was a product of being unselfish mm -hmm. and having a focus on on everybody else around us. Well, on Friday night, you guys uh, defeated Holy Cross rather handily, and and we really went into Saturday. I remember Jerry Johnson and I talked before the game is. This is going to be really maybe kind of that kind of a contest that gives you the conference feel because uh, uh, Lawrence Tech took you down to the wire last year. They're well coached. They're very athletic. They're a good basketball team, but you guys really jumped out on them early. And one of those uh, uh, players that I thought helped you get that early start coming off the bench, Stephanie Conrad popping that three there. And it, it was your starters. It was your bench. But you guys were clicking that first quarter. Yeah, yeah. When you go seven from eight for the, mm -hmm. from the three-point line, uh, you make your offense look really, really good. But I, I think the thing that people don't realize is we were getting in the paint yeah. early and often and, and creating uh, from the inside out. And those looks were largely attributed to the, the post presence that our post players had and our, our paint drives that our guards had. You know, and you talked about getting the ball into the paint. Nicole Ignacek was very effective, but of course, then that opens up the outside game for you, and uh, uh, it was a lot of fun to watch, and the three-point shot was amazing. We saw Stephanie Conrad, we saw Marco Wolfter, we saw Carly Lang, but again, it all starts on inside, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really does. I mean, there was a couple of those, once you get hot, you know, a couple of shots that probably aren't great shots start falling, but the majority of these are, we kick it into the big dog and they throw it out, or we get a paint touch, we throw it out, and, and Raj, that kind of play right mm -hmm. there by Carly Lane gets me juiced up. And uh, it, it got the whole crowd, it got the team fired up and built us so much momentum from one charge. You know, Katie Key, I, I think her role this year maybe is she's not going to maybe score a ton for you. She can. She popped that three a little bit, but I love kind of the energy, the effort, and the way she leads on the defensive end and just the little things she's doing for you guys right now. Yeah, I think there will never be a tougher player on the floor than Katie Key at any given moment. She's, she's gritty and, and she wants to, the challenge of guarding the other team's best player and, and uh, just really putting pressure on the opponent. And, and she's great at it. She's an elite defender. And, and we really build and, and feed off of, off of her energy and her time. Well, we're in the third quarter now, and after that first half where you built the big lead, I, I, I liked the third quarter. Well, <laughs> I, don't say that. <laughs> I, I, I liked that the effort and energy, it was kind of a strange, it was like out of place. 
with the rest of the course, but I didn't think it was for a lack of effort, maybe necessarily, but maybe the execution wasn't always there. Well, I think you got to give credit to Lawrence Tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they are a good team. They're number 21 in the country. We jumped on them early, but, mm -hmm. but obviously they're going to have some pride when they come out. So they did a really good job of stagnating our offense. Uh, but the thing that I was happy with outside of, I mean, I wasn't happy with the 10 points mm -hmm. in the third quarter, but we only gave up eight points in that third quarter. Mm -hmm. So we still somehow found a way to win it, win that quarter. Yeah. Um, and we did it on the defensive end with toughness and intensity. So I, I really like that. Well, uh, now up next for you guys, Coach, is you go on the road, so to speak, yeah. but it's just over the other side of the county at Taylor, where you're now in the, the Crossroads League River States Classic and a chance to... Uh, take on some teams that are going to be good quality opponents, but uh, um, at a neutral site, what kind of are you looking forward to or what, what do you hope to accomplish other than two wins this weekend? Yeah, I mean, while we got two wins this past weekend, there's a lot of things that we need to grow in before we hit the, hit the conference season here right before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. next week. So uh, I look forward to continuing to take care of the basketball. You know, you said it on the, on the air before our game, we got to have a positive assist to turnover. Mm -hmm. and, and fortunately, we did that against Lawrence Tech, mm -hmm. and, and we need that to continue on against IU East and Cincinnati Christian. IU East beat us pretty handily yeah. last year, so this is a challenge for us to uh, maybe a little bit of redemption, uh, just a chance to, to rectify that, that loss last year that still stings a little bit. Um, but more than anything, we're, we're focused on us. We're focused on getting better every single day. And, and obviously two games this weekend for Crossroads League play will, will be a great challenge for us. You guys have played a really tough schedule here so far in this season. And, and right now four and three, but again, a really brutal schedule. And sometimes that kind of schedule can maybe break a team down a little bit. But how do you feel that they have responded? Because it seems, at least from what we saw last weekend, you guys are improving it. It wasn't, you know, maybe a couple tough losses didn't get their heads down, but they have been focused on getting better. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know, we, we talk about Katie Key, Nicole Gnosik, mm -hmm. Michaela Martini. They've been here before. They've taken butt kickings before and responded. They've been great before and, and handled that in stride. So I think having leaders like that are, are very key. And from a staff's perspective, it wasn't all for loss in those in those mm -hmm. tough games that we did lose. Uh, there was a lot of things that we took away. And like some big wins in there, I should say. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. We had some big wins, but as it relates to the tough losses, you're right. It could bury us um, if if we we're a mentally weak team. But we refuse to let that be the case, and we view challenges as opportunities for growth. And so we took those in stride. And and I, I feel like, and I believe, and I'm proud of the growth that has already taken place in this short season so far. All right, well, Coach Ethan Welly, thank you so much for stopping by. As we said, women's basketball will be back in action at the Crossroads League River States Classic on Friday, 5 p.m. as they take on IU East. That game will be played in Upland at Taylor University. Well, when we come back, we'll talk to some players from the men's basketball team as their season is just getting underway as well. Don't go away. Welcome back to Wildcat Week. Men's basketball, well, they've been playing for the past few weeks now, and they've already accumulated a 6-1 and one record. And so now here to talk to us a little bit more from the team, a couple of the guys on the squad, Evan Maxwell, a senior and a freshman in Isaiah Payton. So, guys, welcome to the show. Evan, I know for you this is a lifelong dream come true. Yeah, my whole life I've wanted to be on this show and actually get to meet you. So I'm just nervous, you know. <laughs> it's a big deal for me. We get to tease with Evan a little bit because it's been actually a lot of fun because he's been working with uh, WIW TV a little bit this year. And so I got to ask you, what's it, what's it like being on the other side of the camera? And is it fun or is it stressful? Um, it's kind of cool because I've been watching a lot of students come in and now um, and coaches and seeing from behind the scenes. So now here I am and see things from the other side. It's pretty cool. Now, Isaiah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Evan B is a, a senior. Uh, people have seen him last year, but you're brand new. So give us an idea. Give the, uh, the folks out there just an idea of who you are, where you're from, mm -hmm. and, and, and what you might be studying here at Indiana West Lane. Uh, my name is Isaiah Payton. Uh, I'm studying in business administration. And I'm from Mason, Ohio, mm -hmm. near Cincinnati. So. And now you're at the Moeller High School in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up just outside of Toledo, Ohio, mm -hmm. and everyone knew Moeller for football. Yeah. And so I know it's still a very strong football school, but 
you guys had a pretty good run there in basketball as well, didn't you guys? Mm -hmm. what, what was your basketball experience like at Moeller? It was an awesome experience. It was a, definitely a big sense of family mm -hmm. around the room, around the room. So it was an awesome experience for me. How, what's the farthest uh, you guys ever got with Moeller in the state tournament? We won state uh, my senior year. Mm -hmm. Junior year, we went, had a perfect record and lost in the state finals. And then, yeah, uh, sophomore year. We didn't go that far, and neither did we freshman year. So I wanted to ask both of you guys, because you, you came here to Indiana once in a little bit different route. Evan, you transferred here. Isaiah, you came as a freshman. But and I'll start with you, Evan. Um, when you're looking at a school and, and you, just, you, you think about, okay, I'd like to maybe attend there and play basketball, um, what are all the factors that went into that? And kind of why did you choose Indiana Wesleyan? What were the big things that stood out to you? Um, well, there's a lot of things you can focus on. You can focus on the success of the team, the type of players they have, kind of coaches, and your relationship with them. Um, the biggest things for me were um, how I related with the coaches, um, if we connected on any levels, like what meant something to them. Mm -hmm. And um, so drawing me here, we cared about the same things and had the same passions. So I kind of had an idea of what kind of guys would be on the team. Um, but ultimately, it was just that culture that, that brought me here and that I was really looking forward to. Isaiah, I know uh, coming from Ohio, mm -hmm. you know Indiana is a big basketball state, obviously, but as you were looking at schools, kind of what sold you, if you will, on, on Indiana Wesleyan? Um, just I saw how the team's energy and their leadership, and I just wanted some, I wanted a piece of that. I wanted them to be a better leader, and so I think it would be awesome if I just came here and gave it my all and tried my hardest for my teammates. Uh, that's a great kind of lead in. What I was going to ask you, Evan, being a senior now, um, everybody looks to the seniors for leadership. And, and I, I know uh, Jacob Johnson and Ben Carlson did a great job with that last year. And, but of course, they've graduated now and they moved on. So for you, being one of those senior leaders, kind of what, what importance is that role or what does that look like for you? What, what areas are you expected to lead in? Um, well, it's extremely important. There's a culture of a lot of good leaders in the past, and I only had one year to get a feel for that with Ben and Jacob, but if, uh, if it was any other year, that was the perfect year. Those were the perfect guys for me to learn from. I was able to watch and see how things were done. I didn't want to come in and act like I knew all the answers, but I just really wanted to continue on the legacy that was left before me. Um, so just a big thing is um, finding out my leadership styles, finding out how guys respond to me, and. Uh, my strengths and what I bring to the team and then just how to call greatness out of my teammates, how to see things um, that they do well and things they don't do well and call out more of the great things and help them grow in the areas where they're not as good. Um, so yeah, it's, there's ups and downs figuring that stuff out, but I'm figuring it out. One of the things I always kind of wondered about is people will say of a team this year, for example, the Wildcats this year, well, they're the defending national champions. And I don't know how I really feel about this, and I wanted to ask you because awesome season last year. You guys won a national championship. It was a, you know, uh, just an unbelievable finish to the season. But now it's a new year, and there are new people, new faces. So do you guys put that in the background, or how does that national championship season affect what you do this year? Um, I mean, it's awesome that it happened, and um, it's a great experience, but... We haven't done anything yet. So yeah. this is a completely new team. We have returners, but it's a mindset that this is a brand new team. It's the first time we're ever playing together. So I don't think we have a mentality that we've accomplished anything at all yet this year. I mean, we've won a few games and stuff, but we're just trying to grow, um, continue moving forward. And we have a goal in mind, um, goals on the court and off the court. And so, yeah, it's just that mentality that we haven't gotten anywhere yet. We're just, we're just starting now. Well, and some of the new guys you talked about, Isaiah is one of them, but Isaiah, for you, um, being a freshman, there's a, kind of that delicate balance of like, I want to learn and grow, but I also want to contribute, and kind of at this level, you're mm -hmm. expected to contribute too, so um, how has that adjustment been for me, and how have these guys helped you out in that? It's good because I have great leaders in front of me, and Joel shows me the right way, and he's just a very strong leader. I just need to pick pieces off of him, just keep learning off of him, and just, yeah, I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, first of all, congratulations on a great start to the season so far, and uh, it's been a lot of fun already getting to call a couple of your games this year. We're looking forward to, to a lot more, and best of luck in this season. Thank you very much. Thanks.
All right, well, the men will be in, back in action on Wednesday the 14th when they host Cincinnati Christian in Lucky Arena. Game time is at 7 p.m. Well, when we come back, Michaela Woodfork will bring us the breakdown and we'll talk to Coach John Foss, head coach of the cross country team as they make their preparation for the national championships in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week. We have so many different sports competing on this campus. So to help us bring us up to date, in this two minute drill, we welcome Michaela Woodfork with the breakdown. Thanks Roger. It was a pretty light week for the Wildcats. The men's basketball team beat Grace Christian 102 to 82. Joel Okafort tied the record of 16 assists in a game made by Nikki Mallory in 1986. The Wildcats sit at number one in the league. Volleyball had a five set match against St. Francis for Crossroads League semifinals. These ladies definitely did not go down without a fight. The scores were 25 to 15, 24 26, 25 23, 9 25, and ended on a close game of 15 to 13. Talk about intense. Well, it looks like the women's basketball team has finally got their groove back. They competed in the Leah Whitaker Classic and first faced Holy Cross, who they beat 89 to 60. They stole the game from Holy Cross in the first half, leading by 20 points. Nicole Ignacic was a beast underneath the basket, scoring 18 points in just the first half. Elena Edejwa also played an amazing game with nine rebounds and 15 more points. Next, they played Lawrence Tech and beat them 82 to 51. This was a great game shooting for the ladies as they shot 70.4 from the field and 87.5 from behind the arc. You go girls. That's all I have for you this week on The Breakdown. Back to you, Roger. Well, thank you, Michaela. We're going to talk some cross country and the Wildcat cross country teams. Well, both the teams, men and women, they have had a great season so far. They're on their way to Cedar Rapids, Iowa later this week to participate in the NAIA National Championships. And here to talk about cross country is the head coach of the Wildcats, John Foss. Coach, uh, trying to think. 31, 32 seasons? 31 years, yeah. It seems like yesterday. Right? It does, it does. It went by very quickly. <laughs> well, let's talk cross country. It's been really a, a great season for both the men and the women's. The men's team currently ranked number four in the nation. Women's team have cracked the top 20. They're at number 20. But can you kind of give us a sense about your season overall, how that's gone and and uh, how it's progressed? Absolutely. We, uh, we started way back in February with uh, setting a vision and kind of a goal for our season, and then uh, worked hard on developing a plan, mm -hmm. and they followed that plan beautifully. So in September, we were running a lot of miles, mm -hmm. and we weren't running very fast on the course. Some teams beat us that uh, maybe gave them hope, mm -hmm. um, but this is a great group of young men and young women. The men, uh, 18 of them will be back next year, mm -hmm. the top 18, and they just have uh, they've worked very hard. They've been very coachable and very successful so far. The, the ladies are also having a great season. Now. Let's talk about first the guys uh, in the Crossroads League Championship. Um, you said a young team, a relatively young team, but uh, um, I know you, you had commented that they showed a lot of maturity and poise in that race. And I don't know, have you ever had a, a team in the league championship dominate in the fashion they did? If I read this right, five of the f top six runners were Wildcats, and then you had seven in the top 12, which well, it's just like, you really blew away the competition in, the, in that day. Well, it was a good day for us. And actually, we had nine, Roger, that were in the top 15, which are all mm -hmm. league, but eight and nine don't get all league because mm -hmm. they're beyond the top seven. Yeah. So uh, those eighth and ninth runners were two freshmen for us mm -hmm. that looked great, uh, which means there were only six guys from um, nine other teams that were ahead of our number nine runner. Mm -hmm. And so that, we've got a lot of depth. Um, it was a great race last year when this was a very young team. Uh, Taylor uh, surprised us and went 1-2. We went ahead and won the meet mm -hmm. because of our depth. And uh, this year, I think they were on a bit of a mission to make sure that didn't happen again. So we went 1-2. Um, young man from Kenya who runs for Goshen College finished third, and then we closed the door on 4-5-6. And Chris Maxson for, mm -hmm. for the Wildcats uh, paced the way for you guys. Um, 
won the individual championship, and I think he's only a sophomore, am That's I right. correct? So uh, really a great day for him as an individual, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely, and it's really the Chris Max and Jesse Saxton show yeah. because they keep taking turns. Jesse's been the National Runner of the Week. Chris was never able to achieve that. Chris has been the Crossroads League champion. Jesse wasn't able to achieve that, but they've been 1-2 in both of those races. And really throughout the season, they help each other. Um, where one is weak, the other one is always there. And uh, so that's been, uh, although individual championship is what you would title it, uh, it's really been a, a team championship. And of course, they, uh, if I could, Roger, they started out that meet the first almost half of the race running with their teammates. Mm -hmm. And we were back in the pack, and then they, they still managed to come on and go one, two. Well, speaking of running with your teammates on the women's side, sure. if, I, if I read this right, um, you had your top five runners all finish within 33 seconds of each other yeah. for a really, uh, again, another great day for the ladies. They finished uh, runners up in that in the in the women's competition to Taylor, who was really an outstanding women's uh, cross country team. Right. But it was a it was a really good day for you, for your ladies. Yeah, absolutely. And and Taylor has been a very good women's program for the last five or six years. They've kind of taken over that spot from us in the last uh, uh, few years. Um, and this year, they are as good as I've ever seen them. Mm. So they sometimes make us look bad, but uh, you're right, a 33 second gap for one to five runners is just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And then even one to seven was 51 seconds. And this is a team that we lose Becca, mm -hmm. uh, our senior, um, but really everybody else is back and we've got some runners that, were, that are learning the system that will be very successful next year as well. You mentioned uh, Becca Grow. she finished mm -hmm. eighth overall uh, time of 19 even so really a great way for your senior to, to kind of step up at the right time in the conference. Oh absolutely and, and the nice thing about Becca is every year she has improved dramatically um, to become one of the best runners in the league. Uh, last season in track season she had a very good year went to NEI Nationals in track um, and she's been at NEI Nationals I believe every year uh, either running uh, individually or for the team in cross country. Well I know you every coach but I know you really focus on your team peaking this time of the season and of course we hope they are because now you go to Cedar is it Cedar Rapids Iowa Cedar Rapids yeah um, first question is the course still underwater <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Seminole Valley Park which yeah. is surrounded by the Red River basically and uh, they were they were eight feet underwater yes. back in October we canceled a meet and went to Bethel instead um, but uh, they are out from being underwater and they have dry conditions through Friday. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. It's a fast course, mm -hmm. so fair course, and we should be able to run very well. You're correct. We want to make sure that our optimal performance is this Friday uh, at the championship for both men and women, and we, we plan very carefully for that. Mm -hmm. And everything is clicking, so I think that's there. Our biggest obstacle will be just uh, fear and uh, nerves and you know that uh, stress that comes with being in, in, in a bigger spotlight. Well, Coach, congratulations on really an outstanding season for both the men and the women's teams and certainly best of uh, luck this weekend out in Iowa. Out in Iowa. It would, it would say, is this, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. So <laughs> we hope it's, <laughs> we, we, we'll hope we can reverse that maybe. This That's is right. Iowa, this is heaven. That's right. Okay. Well, again, good luck this weekend. Thanks, Roger, appreciate it. And as we said, the Wildcat cross country teams will be running in the NAIA National Championships uh, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, coming up this weekend. Well, that's all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you'd like to see more of Wildcat Week, you can visit our website, wiwtv.com. There you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, that is wiwtv.com. And you can stay connected with all our local programming by subscribing to our YouTube channel. That is WIWTV51. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat Week. <laughs>